Okay, let, our first talk is uh, by uh, Alvaro Gomez, and he's going to talk about uh, the uh, LHCV latest result and new perspective. Please uh, go on, uh, Alvaro. Okay, uh, hi everyone. This is still good morning. The actual official is good afternoon in Brazil, but good morning for the rest of you. Uh, I am Alvaro, and I'm going to talk about these latest results from the LHCV experiment and new new perspectives uh my outline here of course the uh lhcb has a lot of of very interesting results in many different areas but uh, I'm, I'm, what i'm trying to do here is is just to have an overview of the latest papers published by the experiment or at least made it public by the experiment and see how they fit to the rest of the results that we already have and of course see what the future uh, holds for us especially after the upgrade so I'm going to talk a little bit about the CK and gamma mixing parameters, uh, the CP violation measurement, especially this K-pi puzzle, spectroscopy, and uh, I will start, of course, with this mm -hmm. updates on the left universality that we have on evidence for. Uh, first, a quick overview of our experiment. This is the LHCB detector we have here on the, uh, I, I think you can see my pointer, right? Uh, we have here yes. on the right the vertex locator. Of course, this is the the proton-proton collisions and the, the interaction point uh, where we basically do our primary vertex reconstructions, and many of the particles actually starts our reconstructions there and goes uh, downstream uh, to the experiment. We have the magnet to to bending particle uh, charged particles, which helps to to the measurement of momentum. We have the rich detectors to to identify particles, uh, the tracking system, uh, which helps, of course, the momentum reconstruction, the calorimeters, electromagnetic and hadronic, and finally the immune system over here. But uh, I'm going to focus this presentation, uh, you're going to see throughout my, my slides, many of the results actually relating to electrons and, and photons. So this is, uh, I just want to actually uh, go forward and say this is already, uh, uh, those results are uh, uh, pretty important and uh, it's a, a very nice achievement from the LHCB because of the difficulties to actually reconstruct this kind of the case. For instance, uh, if you take the electrons, they radiate Bremsstrahlung photons uh, when they interact with the detector. And sometimes this radiation happens before the, the magnet. And uh, when these particles goes over there and uh, we use all this bending stuff to actually measure the momentum, we have uncertainties in these momentum measurements and the energy measurements because we lose this Bremsstrahlung radiation. So the idea here is try to, to do this Bremsstrahlung recovery, which is a search for energy deposits in the electromagnetic calorimeter, and then try to add back to the electron energy and see if we can do a, a, a nice job at reconstructing electrons. Uh, this is mainly the idea. Of course, there is many more details, but the, the, the basic information here is, is very hard to do this kind of reconstructions. And if you actually include in, in, in the whole idea of the experiment, uh, work with very rare case, uh, for instance, thinking about standard model predictions, and uh, you add up to the to the rarity of these decays in the standard model. The difficulty is to reconstruct some of of the products of the decay. Then uh, you have a very difficult scenario that LHCB had done a, an amazing job. But uh, going forward, uh, we have the data acquisition. So uh, just a, a summary of what we have so far. Uh, when I call, when I say the run one and run two uh, uh, data collected, I'm talking about nine inverse phantom bars, or, or on the contrary, of course, every time that you see my slides, nine inverse phantom bars, then we're using the whole data uh, collected by the LHCB run one and two. And this is more or less what was uh, collected throughout the years of, of uh, collisions in the LHC. And uh, of course, the LHCB experiment, we are a very nice experiment talking about precision of tracking of our tracking system. Uh, we have excellent PAD using the rich detector. We have very nice uh, reconstructions in, the, in our software trigger, not only in the L0 trigger, the hardware trigger. So there are many details in this reference over here. I will not go through all, all these details, but the, the main information here is uh, the trigger of the experiment it had performed amazingly in the run two especially and uh, had allows, allowed uh, uh, many of our physicists to actually do these great results using very rare decays and very difficult to be reconstructed. Uh, talking about physics now and, and some of the results, first uh, uh, talking about the leptin universality, uh, just a quick overview. 
overview, uh, we have these V2S transitions into, uh, and also the, the dileptons. Uh, this, these are uh, fluid change in ultra current uh, uh, transitions, which means that they are suppressed in the standard model. Uh, they are only allowed in this loop diagram over here. And uh, uh, we can do some calculations theoretically to predict the disbranching fractions to be around 10 to minus 7 to 10 to minus 8. And uh, the idea here also is uh, uh, talking about the standard model coupling of these gauge fields to the three charged leptons. Uh, they must be identical inside the theory. So uh, any kind of uh, uh, differences over here, it's clear a new physics uh, a scenario. And uh, this is what we call the lepton universality, which means uh, the gauge field coupling exactly the same with the electron mu's and tau's inside the standard model. Uh, this means that uh, if we take uh, one specific decay, uh, a meson B decay into the hadron plus a dilepton, the ratio of these decays uh, must be uh, equal one. Of course, it will not be exactly one because we have some small corrections to do, mainly to the differences in the lepton masses. Uh, we also cancel some hadronic uncertainties related to these decays. We also have some QAD corrections to be done and, and during the measurements of these decays. But uh, in a common sense, uh, if we have a significant deviation from unity for these ratios, then we have new physics beyond the standard model uh, evidence at least. So what we do here is these lepton universality tests and uh, check if these ratios are one. If they are not, then we have this evidence, clear evidences for new physics. Uh, Going to the specifics of, of these recent results, what I'm, I'm going to show is uh, two tests for the lepton universality using the whole what, run one plus two data set. Uh, first is the, the, the B0 to the K short uh, dilepton and the, the B plus to K star plus dilepton. And uh, these are the ratios that I'm going to show in the next slides. Uh, these one are, uh, I just want to emphasize here as I, as I did before in, in, in the description of the experiment, uh, you can see here that we are talking about electron decays and, and reconstructing, reconstructing these guys. And also K short uh, is not trivial to be reconstructed in, in the detector due to, to the nature of, of this meson that flies a, a little bit. And uh, it's difficult actually, difficult actually how to, to reconstruct the vertices for this kind of decays. So uh, these K short uh, electron electron decay, it's very difficult to be reconstructed and uh, they were not observed until the LHCB results. And uh, this also is the isospin importance to the B plus to K plus dilepton and the B0 to K star zero dilepton. And this one, especially here, the B plus uh, to K plus dilepton is the one that was published at the beginning of the year, uh, which reveals uh, the evidence for the lepton universality violation. Uh, for the results, uh, as you can see from, from uh, the invariant mass for the K-short electron-electron and the K-short K pi plus electron-electron. I uh, just want to draw your attention here. This is the K-star product. Uh, so uh, you can see the, the invariant mass. This is a very difficult uh, decay to be measured, but yet we, we've done an amazing job here. And this is the first observation of this two decays, 5.3 sigma uh, uh, significance for the K-short electron electron and uh, 6.0 sigma for the K star uh, plus electron electron. And uh, we use this case and compare to the K short mu mu, the K short uh, pi plus mu mu. This is again the K star product. And uh, we compute the so called R K star uh, for the lepton universality test. And these are the results uh, for the K short dilepton. We have uh, 0.66. Uh, the first uncertainty is statistical. The second one is experimental systematics. Uh, we also have the B plus to K star plus dilepton, 0 0.7. This is the stati statistical and the experimental uh, systematics. Uh, the significance for these decays is 1.5 and 1.4 sigma for, for this measurement, sorry. Uh, so uh, uh, looking to these two decays, uh, th these two results, Specifically, they are consistent with the standard model, but we see, uh, looking to the main value of, of these measurements, that uh, they all follow the same pattern as you can see here. We have the Bell results, and then we have uh, these two results for from the LHB experiment. Uh, we are, of course, more precise comparing to, to the B factories, 
and uh, we are following the pattern apparently that this ratio is a little bit below the unity as was also measured in the other uh, left universality tests. Uh, for comparison, take this uh, B plus to K plus leptin leptin uh, test that LHCB has also uh, investigated. Here on the left plot, we have the K plus electron electron. Again, very difficult, but uh, we achieved to, to measure this decay. And uh, here on the right, we have the K plus mu mu. And uh, we also compute these uh, ratios uh, for, for the leptin universality test. And for these case, we have the famous evidence for the leptin viol universality violation. This is uh, 0.846, so again, statistical and experimental systematics. And the, here are the results comparing to the big factories. Uh, things are narrowing down to apparently a leptin universality violation for these decays, but this is only evidence we need more data to actually confirm this, and that we will have actually more data in the upgrade of the experiment. I am including here on the right just a couple of possibilities. We could have the, the Z prime uh, uh, interaction, Bose interaction to, to the dilepton. This would be some sort of a tree diagram. This is not, it's not a model. This is beyond the standard model and uh, we would have to pursue this Z prime. We also have the lepton quark option, uh, which means different uh, interactions uh, between this lepton quark gauge and uh, the leptons of the standard model. Uh, different uh, coplanes means uh, uh, ratio different than the unity. So this is the two possibilities, but of course we have many more uh, theories coming out and trying to explain this lepton universality if actually it confirms in the upgrade of the LHCB. Uh, this is not a uh, 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 all these leptin universality tests and apparently, uh, and, and of course this evidence for the violation, it's not the only thing that we have in the flavor, in, in talking especially in the, fla in the, the flavor changing neutral currents uh, sector per se. Uh, we have other flavor anomalies happening uh, uh, in, in this sector. Uh, we have, for instance, the branching fraction for the, this transition a B to S and the dileptons uh, we have multiple measurements that are below the standard model predictions, and uh, apparently some evidence is also that there is something happening uh, in the sector. We have the branching fractions for the B to mu mu and the B sub S to mu mu. Uh, this is again a prediction from the standard model. We, uh, uh, we can actually co compute what is the prediction for these branching ratios, and also the ratio of the B to mu mu and the B sub S to mu mu uh, decay. So uh, this is also something that have been uh, pursued not only by the LHCB but also for, for Atlas and the CMS. Um, and we have also an, uh, some observables uh, when we perform the angular analysis for the B2 K star mu mu and B2 B plus to K star plus mu mu. Uh, we have some observables here. They are not compatible with the standard model uh, within this uh, three sigma uh, standard deviation. So uh, a lot of uh, more evidences Evidences only, uh, we have no confirmation of any of any of these anomalies, but uh, all of these anomalies are in the in the flavor changing neutral currents together with the leptin universality. So apparently there is this whole sector in the standard model that uh, might have something more going on over there. <clears throat> going to the CKM and the mixing parameters, this is some sort of precision measurement. Uh, here on the right, we have uh, the old picture of the, the, the CKM triangle uh, and the parameters and, and all the, actually the parameters related to the, the CKM triangle. Uh, and uh, what have done uh, through the run one and two uh, of the data collected by the LHCB and of course uh, using other experiments, other experiments contributions, we have uh, departed from, from this picture on the left. And what we, and we are so far here on the right, so we have pinned down many of the of the parameters related to this triangle. And uh, of course, this is largely driven by the LHCB experiment, which have uh, provided many of the most precise measurements uh, uh, related to, to all these parameters here in the CKM in entire triangle. Uh, recently, what the LHCB have done is. Uh, performed the CKM gamma measurement by combining many different decays uh, in order to provide a very, uh, statistically speaking, very uh, precise measurement of the gamma and all the parameters related to the triangle that we just saw. 
uh, a quick overview, the CKM gamma, uh, this can be measure, me measured using the case that are actually sensitive to the interferences between the favored B2C transitions and the suppressed B2U transitions, uh, transitions such as uh, this one that I'm, I'm showing here. So uh, the thing is, uh, there, there are some unknown parameters when we analyze just a single B2D HD case. And uh, so uh, what we do uh, generally is uh, we try to obtain those parameters combining other D decays and all the B to D decays. And, uh, and uh, we try to constrain all these parameters and build one huge uh, analysis, uh, which includes more than, than 150 parameters and uh, uh, more than 50 uh, observables to be measured in order to extract the gamma and also other parameters from the CKM triangle. Uh, this is just a list of the decays that we are using. Uh, they are all uh, described in the reference over here. And we have uh, some B2D DH decays, uh, you can see over here. And uh, we have also at the bottom of this list, uh, we are also using only the, the D decays, the, the D meson decays going to the hadrons, uh, not the B to D and, and D going to something else. So we are summing all these, guy, all these guys over here and uh, constraints, all, all the parameters. Uh, I don't have a parameter in one specific decay, so I use the other ones and I combine everything in order to extract the gamma and other measurements. Uh, as I said, we, the combination uses a total of 151 inputs observables, and we measure 52 free parameters. They are all described, again, in the paper. Most notably, we have the gamma, which is the, the 65.4 degrees, uh, very small uh, uncertainty related to this measurement. This is the most precise measurement for a single experiment, but of course, in the, in the PDG, you will find the world average for this parameter, which is even are more precise than this. And uh, also uh, a nice result, this is the most precise to date, uh, measurements for the, the, the char mixing parameters X and Y. Uh, this is also a very nice achievement for the experiment, but we have uh, other results not uh, described in this particular paper, but in the previous paper in 2020, uh, but using the run two experiment uh, 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 data from the experiment for the delta MS um, in the CKM triangle, which is also the most precise measurements from the LHCB experiment. So uh, uh, it's a, a very nice achievement uh, regarding the parameters related to the CKM. We have, uh, again, CP violation. And uh, the interesting result here is related to this K-pi puzzle. Uh, just an overview uh, what we ex expect if we analyze the B0 to the K plus pi minus or the B plus to K plus pi zero. Uh, these decays are, are isospin symmetric, so the prediction in the standard model will be to the ACP for these guys to be uh, equal, to be same. Uh, but Bobar and Bell experiments, they have measured uh, differences in, in these two guys with a standard, with a uh, five sigma deviation. So this is a confirmation that there is uh, differences in, in the decays, in these decays, uh, which is, uh, possibly new physics in the electro weak penguin sector. And I'm saying possibly because uh, what it needs to be done here, it's uh, theoret theoretically speaking, it's uh, go back there and uh, try to rebuild the predictions from the standard model, including next to leading order and even next to, to next to leading order uh, uh, diagrams uh, to these decays and see if we can somehow uh, change drastically the predictions from the standard model to see if uh, more or less this can be fitted uh, in the standard model predictions. Uh, this is a work ongoing, especially from the theor theoristists. But uh, in principle, uh, we have a good hint for new physics going on here in the K-pi puzzle. Um, this is a, a latest result. Uh, and this is interesting because, again, I am highlighting the fact that we are working here for the pi zeros, uh, which is also very hard to be reconstructed due to the case in, 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 in photons. Uh, and you can see here in the invariant mass, so this is very hard to be reconstructed, and yet it's a very nice achievement from the LHCB experiment. Uh, this analysis uses the B plus to J psi K plus as a contract channel, and the result is this. We have an ACP for the B plus to K plus pi zero of uh, 2.5. This is uh, 1.5 sigma only deviation from the standard model prediction. Uh, the first uncertainty is statistical, the second one uh, is experimental systematic, and the third one is the fact that we are using the J psi K plus. 
and this guy uh, we have to account for the ACP of this decay. Of course, we expect it to be zero, but it's not exactly zero, so we account account for this ACP here. Uh, and for the delta ACP, which means the differences between the the ISO spin uh, partners, uh, then we have these uh, eleven point five, which means a measurement uh, above eight sigma deviation. So we have something going on here. As I said, we need to cross check with the standard model predictions to see if somehow this fits to the standard model or, or if this is in fact a hint for neurophysics. Actually, it wouldn't be just a hint uh, since it's eight sigma, then it would clearly be uh, new physics beyond the standard model. Uh, to finalize some sp uh, spectroscopy results uh, coming from the LHB experiment, this is a very interesting, nice, nice graph uh, that we have so far. This is the picture uh, real, uh, related to exotic uh, tetra and pentaquark states uh, published by the LHB since 2011. We have uh, up to date 55 new hadrons at LHB. But I want to highlight, uh, this is also a recent result, I want to highlight this uh, T to C, uh, TCC uh, tetraquark result because this is something that apparently is heating up in terms of, of interest uh, for the theorists. Uh, the idea here is, is kind of simple. Uh, all the exotic states that we have seen so far, they decay via strong interactions. Uh, so, which means that the discovery of a long-lived exotic state, uh, exotic state, and is stable with respect to the strong interactions, that would be intriguing. Which means a, a exotic state, state at retroquark, for instance, that actually decays only through the weak interaction. Uh, a, this could be possible theoretically speaking because we have uh, a hadron with two heavy quarks uh, that I'm calling uh, capital Q, and two large quarks, the small Q. Uh, which means a state more or less combined like this one. This could be a prime candidate for this kind of, of uh, exotic states that, that are long-lived with respect to the strong interactions. Uh, so there is this prediction from this paper over here uh, that would imply that we have this BB to U, BB UD hadron tetraquark that would be stable uh, with respect to the strong interaction and, and would decay via the weak interaction. And uh, I, I am highlighting this prediction because uh, they had also predicted the existence of these tetraquark CC, UD, and uh, the spin one, and they have predicted this near uh, 3.8 GeV, uh, which is near the uh, D star, D star threshold. Um, and this prediction is also made on the, the XI uh, measurement, also from the LHB. This is a, a, a baryon meson as CCU, uh, the LHB have confirmed the existence of this one, and the, which allows in this paper the prediction for the tetraquark states. So what the LHB have done is try to measure the CCUD. Uh, if uh, we can measure it, then it would be a clear path to measure the next one, the BBUD, and this one, BBUD, would be expected to be uh, stable with respect to the strong interaction. And uh, uh, of course, after analyzing in the run uh, uh, the, the whole uh, nine inverse Fentel bar and uh, analyzing this D0, D0, pi plus final state, then the LHCB uh, have reported uh, the observation of this T, to C, uh, this T, which is a tetraquark CC UD state with mass, which is uh, pretty uh, compatible with the, uh, uh, with the prediction in the previous paper, uh, 3.875 uh, uh, GeV. Uh, this is a narrow state uh, which fits uh, very nice uh, in the in, in the characteristics for a resonance, and uh, here on the bottom we can see the invariant mass of d0, d0 pi plus. Uh, we have a clear peak. Where we not even need to actually talk about the significances over here because this is largely significant. And uh, we are highlighting here in this green and purple uh, dashed line. This is the d start this star threshold, uh, which in, the th in theory, uh, this guy would, would behave like a, some, uh, like a hydromolecule, molecule, something similar to what happens in the, in the Van der Waals forces. Uh, this is a very interesting topic because uh, this result actually reinforces the possibility of, of this tetraquark uh, BBUD, uh, which would be again uh, uh, stable with respect to the strong interaction. Um, for the future, 
uh, what we expect from the LHCB, uh, we have uh, some uh, uh, work going on uh, to upgrade for run three and four, which means collect approximately 50 inverse phantom bar of, of integrated luminosity. Uh, this is the, the instant luminosity that we are working uh, for the run three and four. Uh, this, this setup actually means approximately five visible interactions per bunch crossing. We are currently in the nine inverse phantom bar. We worked with approximately one uh, visible interactions. Uh, the readout for the run three and four would be for uh, uh, 40 megahertz. And uh, the differences also in, in terms of the trigger would be instead of using a hardware trigger that uh, somehow uh, imposes some bottleneck uh, for the rest of the another, for the rest of the trigger, the software trigger. That the idea now is try to do a full software trigger, uh, which will lead uh, to affect the two gain for many of the hydronic channels, and also for the results that we have uh, seen so far. And then a second upgrade that would be that would be uh, run five and six, uh, which uh, means collect approximately 300 inverse phantom bar of integrated luminosity, the uh, instantaneous one, 1 1.5, 10 to 34. Uh, this also, of course, means more interactions per bunch crossing. And uh, just to highlight here at the bottom, I am including some uh, uh, graphs, some plots, some results. I mean, uh, left. Sorry? Uh, five, five minutes left. Ah, okay, thank you. <laughs> uh, we have here uh, the results for the RK um, ratios for the lepto universality tests. Uh, so far, uh, as I shown, we have the evidence for lepto universality violation, and uh, we can see uh, these last three uh, results over here from the LHCB. How the uncertainty actually is narrowing when we increase the statistics. So uh, the expectation, for instance, for these guys is uh, narrowing to to confirm the observation of this uh, violation. Uh, here at the bottom, we also have uh, the evolution. This is the, the CKM uh, gamma measurement. Uh, this is the combination, gamma measurement combination that we've done in the LHCB. Uh, we started in 2013, and, and, these, and here are the uncertainties. Uh, and uh, as we increase uh, our data available, then we are so far here with a very uh, small uncertainty. Uh, this is the, the CKM triangle that we actually arrived uh, that, that I've shown at the beginning of my presentation. But uh, the idea is, is go even uh, uh, pin down even more, even one of these uh, parameters, uh, reducing even more the uncertainties related to this. And we, we're going to have eventually 300 inverse phantom bars from the LHCB. But we also have Bell 2, and we have the Atlas and CMS contributions, which are getting uh, one order of magnitude more data from uh, comparing to the LHCB. This is integrated luminosity. but uh, careful because it's not an obvious uh, a comparison. But anyway, the idea here, uh, what I want to show is we have many uh, different uh, uh, experiments and upgrades in the LHC experiments to actually pin down even more the parameters for the CKM matrix uh, uh, parameters. <clears throat> My conclusions, uh, I have shown many important results from the LHCB run two data. Uh, we have this evidence for the lepton universality violation. We have improved the precisions of the CKM gamma measurement. Again, this is the combination, CKM gamma combination measurement. Uh, we have this CP violation uh, in the B2QH decays leading to the intriguing KPI puzzle. And uh, we have more actually to explore uh, in this scenario uh, coming from the, the theory and also from the experiment, uh, especially after the upgrade. Uh, we have many new more uh, exotic states to be observed. Uh, I'm just highlighting the tetraquark uh, with uh, the BB-UD uh, combination, which would mean the first exotic state uh, is stable with respect to the strong interaction that would uh, decay only via a weak interaction. And uh, uh, we also have, uh, we ha still have many important results to come the next two years. We have many analysis uh, being prepared using the run two data. So uh, many more res interesting results will come from the LHCB. And then we have the upgrade. Uh, which would increase the, uh, our data set by a factor of 5 to 10 and will uh, help to pin down even more uh, many evidences and also con confirm many of the interesting results that we have so far. So uh, probably the, the end of this presentation is stay tuned because we have very nice uh, scenario in the LHCB very soon. Thank you.
Thank you, Alvaro. So there is uh, time for some questions. Yes, uh, Rogerio. So Alvaro, very, very nice talk. Um, so I, I, I have a couple of questions. So first, uh, when you see a state, uh, how, how do you know that this, uh, this state is exotic or, or tetraquark? Uh, sorry about this naive question. Um, it's just, just because it's near a threshold for a double meson production, or is there any other uh, hint that it says it's, it's an exotic uh, state? Yes, actually, uh, uh, it's all described in the paper. Uh, but uh, yes, you have more more information. Uh, I mean, as you mentioned, uh, being near this threshold is also uh, uh, something to actually reinforce this state. Uh, but you have some tests to be done that actually checks if this behaves as a, a, a resonance or not. Uh, you have also some tests that checks for for the spins. And, uh, for the spin of, of this uh, state of this contribution. And you are also comparing all these uh, observables that you have in the analysis to the prediction in the, in, in the papers, in the theoretical papers. And uh, everything actually matches. So uh, it allows the experiment to come up and say, okay, we are uh, observing this narrow peak. Uh, there is, uh, uh, this narrow peak behaves as a resonance and it is, it is near threshold in this particular one in the this study stuff threshold. Uh, and we have some other observables there that allows us to conclude that this is a track of work uh, uh, that uh, actually, uh, as I said, uh, would work more like a, a hadronic molecule. And uh, there is all these predictions and, and tests and the confirmation in the paper. Thank you. C can I ask another question for it? Yeah, sure. Yes. Um, so, so the other question is more uh, general. So Alvaro, can you uh, um, summarize the contribution of Latin American uh, groups to the uh, LHCB program? I think that that's going to be, this is very useful for uh, our information. Yeah, sure. Uh, unfortunately, uh, since, since the, the idea was to show the, the, the very latest results, uh, then uh, so far we are in, in more of a, a transition from run one results to run two results. So unfortunately, our results didn't manage to get into this, this public presentation, but we have uh, many and very interesting uh, results in the CP violation for the B2-3H, a three hadron decays, uh, which is the, actually the, the, the analysis that, I am, that I, I've been working since, uh, since ever. Uh, we have also some uh, interesting results uh, related to the DMES in the case that also has uh, contributions from, from our groups in Rio, CBPF, and UFRJ. Um, you have also uh, here, uh, in terms of um, the, technical, uh, the technical evolution of the detectors itself and the preparation for, for the upgrade for the range field, we also have uh, many results in, in the hardware part coming from the CBPF and also from the UFRJ. Uh, they are very active in, in the upgrade, especially in, in the Vetex locator upgrades. We are changing the way we are doing a primary vertices uh, reconstructions in the LHCB for the for the run three and four, and they are uh, uh, they are doing a very nice job there. Um, we have contributions in the trigger of the experiment, which is a more technical information. But uh, I have, for instance, and and the UFRJ also have put some uh, contributions in in the way that we actually optimize the trigger in terms of uh, the bandwidth, for instance. Uh, uh, we have this forty. Uh, megahertz of information coming to the L0 hardware, which is the, the hardware trigger for the LHCB experiment. And we have to decide uh, how many of this bandwidth will be used to reconstruct uh, reconstruct hadrons or, or leptons or or the different kinds of, of particles. And this is a work that uh, was also done by, by the Brazilian groups, for instance. Uh, so we have uh, many uh, technical contributions for the experiment and also physical contributions. Uh, the physical ones, uh, unfortunately, uh, uh, we were not uh, able to actually prepare all the results, but we have this, uh, for instance, apparently we will uh, uh, do some very nice presentations in the CKM next month, or actually the end of the month, if everything goes fine. So uh, um, yeah, we have some physical results to be presented, but not yet. 
Thank you. That's amazing the amount of work and contributions. Yeah, well. Congratulations. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. More questions? Well, actually, I have a question, a general question. If, if I remember at the beginning of the LEC, uh, there was a great expectation about supersymmetry. How, how is the stuff? Can you say something about supersymmetry? There is some test about uh, in this kind of experiment. I don't know uh, many of the details in terms of supersymmetry itself, but as I recall, uh, if there are any other members of, of, of the LHC and the LHCB, they could help me here. But as I recall, the results coming from the Atlas and the CMS, for instance, and the, the Higgs boson results itself, they kind of uh, excluded the many or probably, I would not say all, but I'm going to say uh, 95% of the supersymmetric models were excluded after the, the first results from the Atlas and CMS and the, and the Higgs boson. Of course, uh, uh, there are some other uh, new uh, supersymmetric models and the more theories not exactly supersymmetrical that I'm not aware of that have uh, arrived after these results. I don't know the current states, but as, as I recall, they were eliminated after the first results from Atlas CMS. Okay, thank you, Alvo. You are. So, some more questions? Okay, if there are, okay, Roger again. Sorry, yes. people have to ask questions. <laughs> this is why we left 15 minutes for questions. I mean, this is such an interesting talk. And uh, so I, I want to ask another question, Alvo, because I never understood. I, I think you have to remind me. So, luminosity is not an issue for, uh, I mean, help. You don't. You cannot take out the luminosity of the uh, of the LHC. Is that correct? Um, yeah, but uh, I mean, um, you're talking about the luminosity in the LHCb itself. Yes. So, so you cannot take the whole beam of uh, of the LHC. Uh, yeah, it's a kind of mixture. We can't, but uh, we don't want to. <laughs> <laughs> Because the idea here, uh, we want to uh, these number of, of visible interactions per crossing. This is very important for us because uh, this allows the LHCb itself to actually, uh, for instance, we want to, to study the B to uh, three pi on the case. Uh, so we want to be able to actually reconstruct with a high precision uh, the vertex where these B were, were created and, uh, and uh, then the vertex where it decays. So we are able to actually construct the, all the, the, the three tracks of this decays back to, to its uh, origin, which is the B itself. So it allows us to, to do a lot of precision measurements related to the B meson decay. Uh, and and, and this, is, this can be done because of course we have a very nice a vertex locator uh, detector, uh, but also because we are more or less controlling the number of visible interactions, which, which allows us, which provides us a more clean event in terms of a number of tracks to be reconstructed. Uh, so uh, we want to do these precisions in the B, in the flavor physics, uh, more generally speaking. Uh, that's why we don't want uh, that whole number of, of luminosity coming from the LHC. Uh, okay. And of course, on, on, on the other side of the coin, uh, we have this very, uh, very delicate uh, vertex locator that is built in the sense that uh, we know that we're going to see only a couple of visible interactions. So we built this guy in a specific way that, of course, uh, it would be a disaster if we just uh, put a lot of luminosity out of nowhere. So uh, we can't but uh, uh, we can't have this luminosity because we don't want to, because we have built our experiment in a different way. Okay. And run five and six are, the, are, are the, in the high LUMI uh, LHC already? Yes. Yes, well, the, the last upgrade, this upgrade two would be uh, in the high lumen for the LHC. So a lot of, of changes in, in, in the way that we have built our detector will, will have to be done in order to, to, to fit the, the LHCB in these new parameters. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, you're welcome. Okay, some more questions? You mentioned something about the kind of fan, fan der Waal force. Uh, can you comment more on that? No, no, actually, uh, the vulnerable force that I, I comment, that's uh, just trying to, to build a picture of these uh, hadron, uh, hadronic molecules that we are talking about when we see these narrow, these narrow 
Petra orcs near a threshold. Uh, so we have uh, we are seeing here this TCC uh, near the, the D star D star threshold, and uh, this uh, uh, would actually work more or less like a hadronic molecule <laughs> as that we we have in the von der Waals forces for the standard molecules okay. that we. Okay. But there is a kind of model that uh, represents the forces. There is interaction between these uh, new hadrons of, of uh, the kind. Theoretically speaking, uh, theoretically speaking, yes. But uh, uh, at least at, at, at this point of the publication, uh, we are not measuring any kind of interactions, uh, as, as you asked. Uh, mm -hmm. The idea here is just doing the spectros spectroscopy, which means uh, uh, identify this uh, tetraquark and. Uh, and then measure its parameters and its observables in order to actually confirm that this is a natural quark and not something else. Okay, thank you. Yeah, may, may I talk, to, uh, may I say something? Yes. Yes, uh, uh, <clears throat> no, it's just about the tetra quark. I think there's a, 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 a confusion here, over because you put this star, this star bar. In fact, it, it's this star, this star. Because you have two C's, two quarks. So it's a, a clear uh, uh, signature of the tetra quark because you have two C quarks in, 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 in this signal. And the yeah, yeah. Uh, it, it, it's not the star, the star bar. It's the star, the star. So it's the only possibility is to have two C's and so. It's a no only a quark anti quark like a regular meson. Yes. Uh, yeah, I totally agree with you. Uh, it has to be CC, not CC yeah. bar. So, or, yeah, yeah. That's, I totally agree. Yeah, sure. But, uh, so, so that. Okay, Claudio. Um, yes. Hi. V very nice talk, actually. Uh, I was just wondering, um, you have um, some results of searches of um, lepton number violating processes? Uh, uh, for example, B plus going to pi minus uh, E plus E plus or things like that. Mm, not that I recall of. Uh, no, I don't think we have any any well, uh, for sure, we didn't have any any observation of that, but uh, right. yeah. probably this. Uh, if this was actually one of of the tests done in in a more major analysis, uh, I I cannot affirm for one hundred percent sure. But uh, as far as I know, uh, we didn't make this such a such a test. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Thank you. Still, we have time for some more questions. Now, you mentioned something about the future. Uh, this, uh, if you can put some uh, some time in the future, how, how long will it take to, to update the, the Yeah, uh, uh, the picture, picture is a little bit, uh, uh, the vision of the future, at least the, the near future so far is a little bit foggy because, <clears throat> sorry, because of the, of the whole pandemic problem and the, uh, the work, uh, Working in in the in the experiments, they are more or less just resuming right now and at the beginning of the next year, and uh, I believe the experiments will, will be able to actually rebuild and uh, uh, rebuild the 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 new time, uh, the time frame, the new uh, 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 predictions in terms of time, or for for the whole upgrade uh, for one three and four for the LHB in specifics. Um, but I I believe. Uh, uh, we are in 2021, probably in two years or something, we will have these uh, things working. But again, uh, it's based on, on, on just uh, speculation because uh, the experiment needs to actually uh, uh, rebuild his, his scales after the pandemic. In fact, I have just a very naive question. The pandemic created a lot of economic problem also in, in, in Europe. And so that could, could affect the, 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 the money for the, for, the, for the project or that is completely guaranteed? Uh, I wouldn't say completely guaranteed, but uh, so far uh, we are not having uh, many issues regarding uh, the financing of all, all of this. 
But mm -hmm. uh, uh, as as the team goes, uh, uh, I I would expect some some changes on the fly. But again, uh, I believe that experiments they actually need to uh, sit down at the beginning of 2000 and uh, 2022 and uh, and see where they are after the pandemic and see what we can what they can achieve in in a couple of years or so. <clears throat> okay, thank you. Okay, yeah. let us thank uh, the speaker again. Thank you, thank you, Alvaro. It was a very nice talk. Uh, Rogerio again. Oh, okay. Then the next speaker is Marta Lozada. Uh, Marta, please share your screen.